what he has done in my life. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Now Moses, uh, and I will take, uh, take away my hand and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. Nobody can see him. Anyhow, like 2000 years back, Jesus Christ came to this world. Word became flesh and walked upon this earth. Amen. Now if you want to go in the rapture today, this flesh and blood cannot inherit God's kingdom. Yes, this yes. flesh and blood cannot go in the rapture. No. We need to become the word bride. Amen. You need to become the word bride. Amen. He's coming for the word bride. Amen. Like I said, he's not coming for the stinkers. Amen. He's not coming for the stinkers. Huh? He's not coming for the smokers. He's not coming for the drunkards. He's coming for the holy, pure. Praise the name of the Lord. He's coming for the spotless bride. He's coming for the true children of God. He's coming for the genuine people of God. He's not coming for the liars. He's coming for the spotless bride. Let God help us to live for Christ, to stand for Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Moses that he endured and seeing him no, seeing whom, seeing him who is invisible. Exactly the opposite was the true children of Israel in this record. They endured only when the circumstances were favorable. Hmm? They were largely governed by the things that appealed to their senses. In place of resting in the in, invisible, the eternal God. They didn't rest in invisible, eternal God. You know, their hearts were more for the world. Uh, and you know what happened? The journey was only 40 days. But because of their unbelief, they had to be in the wilderness for 40 years. When you don't believe God, the same thing will happen, precious brothers and sisters. We need to believe in God. We need to have faith in God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. In the present day, there are, there are those who live intermittent, steady Christian lives because they have become occupied with the outward center in circumstances in place of centering in God. They are not centered in God. They are centered with so many things in this world. They are busy, busy, busy. Now forgive me. <clears throat> this phone has become number one God. At present, I'm talking. Now, don't misunderstand me. Huh? Oh, my. This phone is 24 hours in the hands of the people. Young people. Everybody. They give more respect to this phone than God. Huh? God has given us so many good things. We, know, we should know how to use it. When to use it. For what to use it. Huh? Phones are great help. You know. But only thing, you know, huh? we need to know. Even, even, the, even the phone, we need to use it by Holy Ghost. Amen. Huh? We have to be careful, precious brothers and sisters. Huh? These phones have become more important than God. But that's not good. Oh my. Hmm? Oh my. God wants us more and more to see Him. God wants us more and more to see Him. If you see in the right, it's danger. It's, if you see in the left, it's danger. If you see behind, you know what happened to Lord's wife. We need to see up. This is the time we need to see Him. Amen. Fix your eyes upon Jesus. Amen. See him alone. Amen. See him. Amen. 
Fix your eyes upon Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Here we read the children of Israel. Then they believed his words. They did not believe till after they saw. When they saw him work. Then they believed. They really doubted God. That's what we are doing. We are doubting God. Hmm? You know that Pharisee, Simon, you know, he invited Jesus and gave him a good chair, you know. He told Jesus, sit here, you know, sit here, I'll come back, you know, sit here. And when I need, I'll call you, you know. And he was sitting there. Maybe he was sitting there for hours and hours. And the Pharisee was busy with, you know, great people, political leaders. Maybe with the mayor, with the, you know, great leaders. He forgotten the Savior. Almighty creator of heaven and earth. Sitting in that corner. Told him to sit in the corner. I'll call you whenever I need. And that's the way Christians today. And we want him to help us. We want him to help this, help this, do that, do that, do this. Do this, then, huh? and they don't want him to make him the Lord, L-O-R-D, Lord. Now what is the Lord means the controller. <clears throat> they don't want him to control their lives. Huh? They make him to sit in the corner. You know, when I need, I'll call you, okay? Huh? Precious brothers and sisters, let God help us to give him the first preference. Let God help us to give him the first preference. Ah. He's the Almighty. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. He's a, he's a living God. Praise the name of the Lord. He's a great friend. Ah. He's a great friend. He's our big brother. He's our father. He's our mother. He's everything to us. Now, Catholics, they say, Mary is the queen of the heaven. But as a man of God, I want to say, I am the queen of heaven. You are all the queens of heavens. Because he is our creator. Bible says, your creator is your husband. Your creator is your husband. He is our creator. He is our husband. We are Mrs. Jesus. There's a royal crown waiting for you and me. Amen. We are Mrs. Jesus. Amen. We are the queen of the coming kingdom. Amen. Praise the Amen. name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, thank God for his grace. Amen. Hmm? Amen. <clears throat> they really doubted God. When they came to the Red Sea, but when God opened the ways and let them across and they saw Pharaoh and his horse drowned, then they believed, you know, oh my, God help us. Faith is very important. We need faith for everything. Hmm? Anyhow, they led an up and down life because this kind of faith. If you don't have faith, you know, I, our life will be up and down. Up and down. Fall down and get up. We need strong faith. Amen. We need to believe in God Amen. to see the miracles. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. In Psalms 27 verse 13 and 14 says, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. We need to wait upon the Lord today. Huh? Just we pray for five minutes, Lord, do this, do this, do this, do this, you know, and just forget whole day. You know. huh? That's not going to help us. We need to go on our knees. We need to wait upon the Lord. We need to wait on the counsel of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. The true believers, true Christians, they will read the Bible every day. 
and they pray. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Do you believe God only when the circumstances are favorable? Do you believe no matter what the circumstances may be? We need to believe God whatever the circumstances may be. Huh? The world says seeing is believing, but God wants us to believe in order to see. That's the will of God. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. <clears throat> I'm finishing it soon. You know. <clears throat> faith is the substance in this message prophet preached in 1957, he said, now I believe that the last time here I had a demonstration and showed you how that the different senses would operate. Anyhow, let me skip this, you know, this is big. Here in, uh, in uh, Prophet Priest in 53, taking God at his word, taking God at his word. Now what is faith? Faith is the substance, not just a mythical thought. It's the substance of the things hoped for, the evidence of the things you do not see. Now hear carefully. See, taste, feel, smell, or hear. There none of the senses declare it. Yet the sixth sense, which is faith. Sixth sense, which is faith. We need to have the sixth sense which is faith, for very important, okay? The outside man is governed by five senses. See, taste, feel, smell, and hear. The inside man is governed by two senses, either faith or unbelief, faith or unbelief. Hmm? If you believe it, it's just as real to you as if any of the natural senses of the body declare it. That truly these senses of the body can be fooled. But faith is absolutely infalliable. Faith is the sixth sense. We must have that. Praise the name of the Lord. And this body is governed by two senses. One is faith and one is unbelief. Today, what kind of life we are having? Huh? We need faith huh? to govern us, to guide us. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hmm? Oh, God help us. Lord Jesus. Now, God being misunderstood. Priest in 61. Doctor and a lady patient about her growth. Lady was called by the prophet and was healed instantly. Doctor didn't believe. Now seeing is not believing. Faith is the substance of the things you don't see. You believe it first, then it happens. The man who was not a believer, the doctor was not a believer. So therefore it was all mystery to him. He didn't know what was talking about. Huh? Because he couldn't understand, it was a riddle for him. One lady came, she was having growth, cancer problem. Prophet called her, she came, got healed immediately. And the doctor, he was a heathen, huh? and he couldn't believe that. It was a riddle for him. Huh? One day I was sitting in an office in India, but before the church starts, I was, you know, studying in the church and office. One husband, wife, they came to the office. They knocked the door, I said, come in. They both were sitting and crying, husband, wife crying. I said, what's the problem? What's the problem? The husband said, doctor said, my wife is going to leave for three months. Three months, because she was suffering from cancer. And I said, you know, Lord, gave me some wisdom. Lord gave me something to encourage them. I asked sister, who told you sister that you are going to stay alive for three months? Doctor. I said, doctor told you, but not Jesus never told you. Jesus never told you that you are going to stay for alive for three months. 
Doctor told you. Trust in the Lord. Have faith in God. Huh? Our God is greater than the doctors. We respect doctors. We respect doctors. But our God is great than the doctors. And you know, precious brothers and sisters, this is the fourth year she is alive. Fourth year. Doctors had only three months. But this is the fourth year she is alive. Praise the name of the Lord. Faith. That make, that make you stand still. Faith can bring you where you are. You know, that lady, young lady, 12 years blood issue. She was hearing about God. She was hearing about Jesus. Oh, he raised the dead. Praise the Lord. She was very weak in the body. Twelve years. Blood going, you know. You people, sisters know that very well. What happens? And somebody told her, Oh, five bread, two fishes, blessed and fed thousands, thousands of people. She was hearing and her faith was increasing. Today we need to increase our faith. Amen. And she was waiting. She was, she believed. She had faith. Amen. Now, Jesus came walking to her. Same road. He got many ways to go out. To come to Elizabeth, there are so many roads, so many ways. Huh? But, he knows his daughter is waiting. That is faith. And faith in that young lady brought Jesus the same route. Same route. And she wanted to touch his, you know, her, his, his, his cloth, you know, dress. And you know the story. God healed her. Jesus said, your faith healed you. Amen. Same thing with a blind man, blind Bartimia. He hearing for so, so many years and years. Maybe he was born in a good believer's family. Mom and dad told him, one day Messiah will come. And he will tell, he will give you sight. And you, the prophet of God said he was having wife, he was having daughter. And you know how he promised God? Hmm? And he sacrificed his doves. Huh? God heard his prayer. His wife was dying. Hmm? And uh, he went running and he kneeled down and prayed to God, Lord, heal my wife. Hmm? I like his prayer. Maybe it's not in the Bible, but it's in the Bible history, if you can find it. You know, he, he kneeled down and prayed to God. That's what the prophet said. Hmm? <laughs> he said, Lord, I cannot live without my wife. Please touch her and heal her. Give my wife back to me. Tomorrow morning I'll go to the temple and I'll sacrifice my turtle doves. And he did it. As he promised, God healed him. And uh, he sacrificed his doves. Hmm? And then the prophet told us about, you know, his daughter was sick, dying. Huh? He went running and, and prayed to God, if you can heal my daughter, huh? I will sacrifice my only sheep or lamb. Maybe the priests, you know, the church priests or temple priests are, why you are doing that, Bartimaeus? Huh? That's your eyes. That's a trained lamb. Huh? That lamb is taking you every day to the highway to beg. Uh, you will be in problem. I'll give you money, go and buy some, you know, other lamb and sacrifice. Bartimaeus said, no sir, 
I promised God this land. I promised God this land. My land. This land. He said, what, what, what faith you have? I have a faith. One day, the, the walking lamb will come. The lamb, living lamb will walk to me. And that's what happened. His faith brought Jesus Christ walking to him. And healed him. Praise the name of the Lord. Our God is the great healer. He's Jehovah Rapha. He's the doctor of the doctor, physician of the physician. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, precious brothers and sisters. The doctor was a heathen. He didn't believe that. But she got healed. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hmm? First Peter chapter 1, 7 to 9 says, That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of the gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Whom, having not seen, ye love, in whom, though we see him, not. Yet believing, he rejoiced with the joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. <clears throat> Just give me another five minutes. Precious brothers and sisters, there are nine wonderful qualities of faith. If you have paper, pen, you can write it if you want. There is what faith can do. What faith can do. And this will be a great blessing to you. It's a great blessing to me. Number one. Faith is magnet. It can pull healing. Faith is magnet. M-A-G-N-E-T. Faith is magnet. It can pull healing. Number two. Faith as a value. V-A-L-U-E. Faith as a value more than money or precious stones. I'm repeating. Faith as a value more than money or precious stones. Number three. Faith can sign a life warrant. Nobody can sign it. No church can sign it. No pastor can sign it. Your life warrant. But faith can sign a life warrant. Huh? Like that sister, doctor said, within three months you will die. Faith signed her life warrant. And this is the fourth year she is alive. Number four, faith substitutes, S-U-B-S-T-I-T-U-T-S, faith substitutes and occupies impossible spaces. Faith substitutes and occupies impossible spaces. <clears throat> Number five, faith multiply in milliseconds, more than germs. Like you have germs in your hands. Doctor says, wash your hands always. <laughs> People in Western countries, they eat with fork. They don't like to eat with the hand. But in India, poor people, they eat with hands. <laughs> but there are germs in this. That's what doctor says. <laughs> so faith multiply in milliseconds more than germs. Number five. Number six. <clears throat> Faith extends the expiry date. Faith extends. If doctor says you will die in four months, maybe you will live 40 years if you have faith. Faith extends the expiry date. Number seven. Faith gives you good health than food. Sometimes food, food poison kills the people. Hmm? But faith gives you good health than food. Number eight. 
Faith does not mix with other spices. Faith does not mix with other spices. Number nine. Now hear carefully. Faith can bomb 